This is your weekly UAS news update and welcome to week 48. And this week I want to talk about new drones. There's actually a bunch of them coming out, including the Hotel Evo 2 that is finally hitting up the shelves. We also have a rumor from DJI for a new drone, the Mavic 2 Air. So we'll talk about some of the, uh, the specs that may have been leaked. And then I want to talk about an alternative to DJI. Now this may not be for everyone, but we'll talk about a, a company that actually I've talked about in the past and uh, kind of see why they're in the news this week. And then lastly, I want to give you an FAA update, probably not the update that you want, but uh, we'll talk about it. So, all right, let's get started. First thing this week, before we get to the uh, the news items, I want to thank you all because we just hit 3000 followers. Now this may not sound like a whole lot for a lot of people, but uh, to me it is. I, I find it amazing that I'm able to connect with so many people every week, uh, so many people watching our news update every week, and the numbers are growing very quickly. So I'm really excited about this. Thank you for watching, thank you for following, and uh, for uh, uh, making comments on all these videos. It's always a pleasure to wake up in the morning on Friday morning, uh, having people to fight for being the first one to make a comment in there. So uh, keep up the good work. I'm, I'm excited to have such an awesome base of followers. So. Let's talk about the news. The news this week is a little bit, uh, a little bit better than it's been actually in the last couple of weeks. We see new drones hitting the market. Now I've talked about the Evo 2 in the past and the, uh, they, they had some really cool specs, but the drones wasn't available and uh, now it actually is. So uh, if there is, uh, if you, you have to find a dealer, that's how you can get the drone at the moment. I haven't really found any other way that you can get it. I think ordering online obviously is an option, but uh, the, um, the EVO 2 is divided into three different categories, three different models. The first one is just the EVO 2, that's the name of it, and that's uh, about $1,500. That's got an 8K sensor. Now the 8K sensor is going to be for the images. It, it gives you a, an 8,000 by 6,000 image, which, which is massive. Uh, now this is not a very big sensor, uh, but still gives you high a uh, number of pixels, which means that you can actually zoom on the image. I have a suspicion that this is going to be popular for people that do inspections, for example. On the video side, uh, this is something that I hadn't seen before. The specs are actually pretty high on the video side as well, with an image that's going to be about 7680 pixels, 7680 pixel wide and about 4000 pixel uh, tall. So that's actually fairly big compared to a 4K sensor. Uh, they have the Evo 2 Pro, which is at $1,800. That's got a one inch sensor, which is what is on the Mavic 2 Pro. And uh, that's gonna give you much larger uh, video as well. The uh, image size was 5472 pixels for the uh, Evo 2 Pro image um, uh, video size. So again, that's a lot bigger than your 4K sensor. No, a lot bigger than the 4K sensor. And then they have a dual option, which is like the Mavic Enterprise option, where you have the 8K sensor from the Evo 2, and then you have a thermal sensor that's uh, 640 by 512. Now, if you're familiar with thermal sensors, they're usually a lot smaller in terms of number of pixels, but uh, so that's a great platform if you're doing anything with thermal and you need a, a, um, a device that's a little bit cheaper than having a, a much larger drone with an X-T2 camera maybe on it. So I don't have a price for this one. Quite frankly, I haven't really dug to find a price. You have to call them and contact them. I'm not really interested in a drone in itself, so or buying it, I should say. Uh, so I don't really know the price. If you do, please uh, share it in the comment. I'd like to know how much that actually is. I'm gonna put a link as well to their page. Uh, so if you're in the market, if you have an hotel too, or if you purchase one, or if you if you finally get it, please let me know how it is. I'd like to see some footage. I uh, might actually even be interested in buying one just to uh, see uh, how it compares to the DJI product. Speaking of DJI, uh, they are going to be releasing a new product on April 27th. At this stage, we think it's going to be the Mavic 2 Air. There's been, as always, there's always some, uh, some information that gets leaked with images and everything. And uh, in this case, it looks like the specs, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of the specs because I want to wait until next week when the uh, actual drone is released to give you the actual data. Um, 4K video on a half inch sensor and uh, that's gonna provide you with 12 megapixel. And then they have apparently a mode where you can stitch pictures to get a 48 megapixel still, which is interesting because those are the specs that you find on the Evo 2 uh, that I just talked about. 
ADSB receiver. If you're not familiar with ADSB, that's the technology that uh, manned aircraft are using to transmit their location. And uh, DJI has said that they want to equip all of their new drones with the, an ADSB receiver to collect the data from traffic around uh, the drone. So that should give you a much better idea of who's flying around you as long as they have an ADSB transmitter. That's on the aircraft in itself, on the, on airplane, on helicopters. And uh, that's actually uh, been mandated by the FAA as of January 2020. You need to have an ADSB receiver if you're flying in certain type of airspace. Uh, 34 minutes of flight time, which seems pretty high, but again, you know, these, uh, these, <laughs> these times are never something that you actually get because you always have uh, a time where you need to come back and land and you, you have different, different, depending on how quickly you fly, depending on, there's a lot of different factors involved in there. So I would say probably a 30 minute flight time, if that's correct. And then uh, no obstacle avoidance in there. Now, interestingly, I think that other than the size of the sensor, this is gonna be a big competitor to the Mavic 2 Pro. So I wonder how they're going to um, play with the sales on this. And if there's a Mavic 3 Pro around the corner waiting to happen, I'm sure eventually there will be one, but uh, no information at this stage. The next thing I want to talk about is kind of related to DJI. Um, and the reason is because DJI was in the news again this week, and this time from a major news network, where this whole story about data leak is uh, being resurfaced again. And uh, if you remember, if you've been following for a while, a couple weeks ago, I talked about how the DOI, the Department of Interior, had grounded their entire fleet of drones, primarily because they're using drones that are built in China. And there was, um, there was an issue, supposedly, that uh, data was being tra transferred to China and that there could be some spying going on from DJI. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't, I don't, I don't like conspiracy theories, and in this case, I really do think that this is one of those. Uh, there still hasn't been any data provided by anyone to show that there's actually uh, information being sent from DJI. Uh, so I'm, I'm still really on the fence with this until there is actually a hard proof from someone that says that yes, there is a leak and and that data is being sent then I'm not going to worry about flying a DJI product and neither should you, quite frankly. This is only something that is uh, for the Department of Interior and, uh, and I think, quite frankly, this is a lot of political uh, shenanigans going on. But anyway, um, on top of all this, there is a company that's resurfacing or surfacing, I should say, called TerraView. And I've talked about TerraView in the past with one of their drones, but TerraView is an American company and uh, they want to become the alternative to DJI for government contractors and anybody in the public, sa uh, public safety sector. Uh, this company was built by two F-14 pilots and all their drones are manufactured with US parts and non-Chinese parts, which is what they're saying on their website. There's a proposed bill right around the corner that if it gets passed, the US government will not be able to purchase drones with parts, not just made in China, with, with parts made in China or any other countries that uh, this bill has uh, cited in there. So TerraView could potentially become one of the top providers for government contractors because, well, they, they would actually get past this bill. I reported, like I said in the past, on their drone, which is called the Range Pro. And the Range Pro is actually a pretty neat drone if you look at it. Um, it can carry different types of Zenmuse cameras. You've got, uh, if you're familiar with the Zenmuse cameras, that's what you would see on uh, an Inspire, for example, the X5, X5R, the XT, or the uh, Z30. All these would be compatible with this Range Pro drone. And not only that, but it has a, a um, a flight time of 70 minutes, which is which is massive. So if you're into doing very long missions of uh, any kind of inspection, or if you're doing search and rescue, for example, these this would be actually a great drone. Uh, I've reached out to the company because I have a contact there and I'm waiting to hear back and see if they can send me a little bit more information about the drone because I'd like to share this with anyone that's interested because I think it's uh, it, it could be a great product, quite frankly. Last thing I want to talk about today is an FAA update, not the update that you're waiting for. Unfortunately, we still have not heard from the FAA about expiring written exams. So if you took your written exam 
in uh, prior to March 31st of 2018, you still cannot fly as a remote pilot unless you found a, a testing center that's open. There are a few that are open. I've got students taking exams uh, every single day right now. But if you haven't, then you can't fly. You cannot exercise the privileges of your remote pilot certificate. If you took your exam in April of 2018, then at the end of this month, you've got another week or so, you will not be able to exercise the privileges of your remote pilot certificate. So um, we've been waiting for almost a month now from the FAA to come up with some resolution. Uh, I don't know if they're waiting to uh, and hoping that something happens and changes and the testing centers reopen, but it would be nice to know for those people that are affected uh, what they can do to become current again and uh, be able to practice their privileges. The FAA did put a notice at the end of last week after I posted last week's video um, about the fact that you can, it was kind of more of a clarification than anything else, saying that you can carry things with your drone uh, as long as you follow all the regulation. And uh, I've, I've mentioned this in the past, essentially what they're saying is yes, you can carry things with your drone as long as you maintain line of sight, and then as long as you're not flying over people, and then as long as the drone is not gonna be affected and crash on something and create damage. That's, that's the bottom line, you can absolutely do that. But if you wanna fly beyond line of sight, then you need to have uh, some kind of uh, waiver and a Part 135 uh, certificate, quite frankly. So they are saying too that they are giving special approval to conduct uh, emergency type of activities with drones. That's really as vague as it was on the website. But uh, again, if you're a pilot and your your certificate, not your certificate, your your written exam has uh, lapsed after two years, 24 calendar months, then you're still out of luck, unfortunately. So uh, if this is your, if you're in this case, please, by the way, let me know. Uh, let me know if you are basically unable to fly as a remote pilot because of this at the moment. Uh, I suspect there is quite a few people out there that are in this uh, condition. So this is all I have. As always, like the uh, video, leave a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel so you can get all the news update every week, every Friday morning at the same time. That's when I post them. And, uh, and then you have a safe flight. Actually, this uh, weekend on Friday, I'm going to do a little photography project with my drone. And uh, I'm kind of excited about it. It's, it involves night flying. It involves a bunch of stars and a bunch of cool stuff. So if this come up, to be something nice I'll be sharing with you guys and uh, I will see you next week.